Export Music Producer for Sounds Australia. Uh, thank you everyone for coming along and thank you for having us. Um, I guess before we get into it, as you can appreciate, describing any market in under an hour is quite the task. So we're going to try and, um, I guess, have t uh, two sets. parts of the format will be one, I'm going to run through a, a presentation which really will just give you uh, an infrastructure and a framework to try and wrap your head around the state of the Australian industry, focusing on the recording industry, the live industry, and a bit on some of the promotion and, and marketing that's going on. But I think more importantly, definitely, than what's going to be shown up here is what these guys are going to be able to share with you. And before we get started, I will actually get you to just introduce yourselves and who you are. And um, a little bit about the company or event, but not too much because I think we'll get into that uh, a little little later on. I'm going to start with the lady. So Chloe. Oh, uh, hello. Um, I'm Chloe Goodyear. I'm from the Woodford Folk Festival, which is in Queensland, in Australia. Uh, we take place annually between the 27th of December and the 1st of January. We're one of Australia's largest festivals. <coughs> Uh, though some people may not have heard of us because we don't spend any money on advertising, but we have uh, an aggregate attendance of about 120,000 people and we run for so six days and we have 20 to 30 stages and a great variety of music. We're very inclusive and if it's really good, we'll put it on pretty much. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Rob Scott. I have a company called Sandcastle Music in uh, Sydney, Australia. Uh, we're a publishing company, we're also a label and uh, we do a lot of music supervision uh, but my background in the business extends over media and I was a program director at Triple J for 15 years which is like the one station in Australia that breaks new music nationally. Jeff? Um, Jeff Trio, we run a company called Code One, um, we're a booking agent, management, um, touring and label um, and we specialise in uh, touring Canadian acts, we have a really large roster to name a few, we had two hours traffic, the band that's playing now, Tom Fun Orchestra, Carmen Townsend. <laughs> did you plan that? No, I didn't. <laughs> I, just can't, I know that band. Um, uh, currently having some big success with the Trues. Um, we do Joel Plaskett and some, uh, a lot. So that's us. Josh? Um, Josh Taylor, from the Harbour Agency, based out of Sydney. Uh, we do have a Melbourne office with our premier artists, we're part of the Mushroom Group and we are the largest agency in Australia. Um, represent mostly local acts and trying to delve into the international market a little bit more. Um, we work very closely with Jeff on a couple of these artists, so yeah. Cool. Um, so my, my position is the export music producer at Sounds Australia, which really is the national program that helps Australian artists to get out of Australia and market uh, to the rest of the world. That said, uh, I guess my role at the ECMAs is having been the author of a touring guide for how to tour Australia, which the Canadian Cultural General funded in 2004. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Sharon Pinney. If you want to just put your little hand up there. <laughs> Sharon... Um, really pioneered this and um, got behind it and had your government invest in this, this resource tool. It's been updated uh, last year and is now all available online for you. So anyone that is interested in getting um, a link to that PDF, uh, drop us your email and we'll send that through. There's a French version and an English version. So most of the stuff that we're going to cover is there, but, which is why I'm going to really fly through it. But just to give you um, an idea that it's out there. So... That's a good start. I'm on a different computer, so bear with me. So basic population stats of Australia, we're a little over 22 million. Average age, breakdown there of the, the age. Very much a, a mobile phone using community, I think is something that's you know becoming more and more prevalent. You'll see in the uh, decrease in physical sales, Australia is definitely leading the way in terms of our, our digital consumption, which I think when you're looking at a new market is something um, to be quite mindful of, I think, in the way you can look at a release strategy. Uh, for those that don't know what Australia looks like, that's where we are. <laughs> yeah. And anywhere between 18 hours, I guess roughly, depending on what airline and what ports you're going in and out of. <coughs> Some of the things I think are worth mentioning that 
there's a lot of similarities between Australia and Canada. I think the physical, environmental, the social dynamics of each country really lend themselves to, I think, having quite the, um, I guess, familiar experience. And if you're looking at a market for the first time and if you're looking at somewhere where you think you're ready to take, take your music to that next stage, I think Australia really lends itself to, to, that, to, to that opportunity. And I think similarly for a lot of the Australian artists, they're finding more and more that Canada is the place for them to start. And I think not only being an English speaking language, I think there's just so many different and you'll, you'll kind of come across some areas where we, we really do kind of have a, a wonderful synergy that's really worth acknowledging. Um, there's a list of only a handful of some of the bands that have really made it um, successful, I guess, touring careers within Australia. Some of them uh, have been doing it for quite a while and others just starting out but have made pretty big impacts um, straight out of the bat. You guys can't see these, can you? Oh, we can imagine. Right. You can, you can go. <laughs> Um, and I think the other thing that Australia has is an incredibly flourishing and um, strong independent scene. So even without the partners necessarily, there's still opportunities for artists to get in there and do it themselves. Can I actually at that this juncture get a bit of a who is artists who are, who are in a band? Okay, people that are working with bands or managing perhaps and are looking. Okay, cool. Um, so. We're sitting at the eighth largest market in terms of the recorded music industry. Uh, we have, I guess, comparatively to Can Canada, Canada, um, pretty um, minimal local content quotas, which for us and the artists that we're working with in Australia isn't too good. It's good news for you guys because there's a lot of opportunity for foreign music to be played on our airways and I think some radio stations, the fact that you're not from Australia actually bodes really well. So um, bear that in mind. Uh, at the moment we've got an incredibly strong Australian dollar which is wonderful for shopping. Um, but you know, it, 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 it's, it's I guess in terms of the GFC we came out of it pretty nicely and all's looking good over there for people still going out and people still are consuming and, and certainly going to shows. Um, as I mentioned, our growth in, in digital outpaced our fall in physical, which I think is interesting to note, and we'll just jump through into some of the actual recorded industry stats. I am actually just going to move through this without time, but I think in six countries, um, digital sales <coughs> were up and Australia did have that largest increase. So I think when you used to go down that traditional route of you have to have a physical release, you have to have all these things in place before you go, doesn't have as much impotence as it used to and I think that's something um, you know when you're looking at your plan to kind of bear in mind and I'll have Rob touch on that one a little bit a little bit later um, just looking through digital physical jumping jumping so our live industry is given I think the size of the country is pretty substantial I think our, our environment and our weather uh, allow us to pretty much have a festival every day of the year and then some on the same day, twice a day, three times a day, in the middle of winter, you know, anywhere you go, there is a live music festival somewhere in our country on some day. So I, I think that's, um, you know, I, I know Chloe's going to touch a little bit on what that possibly means in a, in a saturation sense, but I, I, I think for what it's worth, uh, when it's very cold here, there's certainly a lot of um, opportunities um, in Australia. Um, moving right along, the types of tours that we do, we do predominantly most artists that come in for a first time are looking at the East Coast um, and they could look at a Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria run. I think as I start to get a, a lot more well known, there's the opportunity to stretch further into South Australia and Western Australia. And then when you're, you know, at a, at a pretty, um, I, I guess, certainly be, be beyond break even, often people are just jumping around flying everywhere and just doing the key cities but again it also depends on the type of artists that you are type of venues in australia incredibly strong um grassroots scene emerging scene um, lots of pubs clubs theaters sporting rec centers you know a variety and a host of different venues um i guess the language you guys probably refer to clubs more so or venues for us it's a pub or a hotel like so there's a little bit of differences in the vernacular there but same kind of deal uh university scene peaks and flows really i think it's not as strong as it used to be say 10 15 years ago but you know there's still some plum gigs that you can get certainly around o weeks and different um semester breaks that are worth looking at also um posters are 
very much you still as well as um, print media. Pretty much every state has one, if not two, free street press magazines, which um, probably aren't used in the same way as they used to be in terms of buying advertising, but they're definitely a source that the industry still refer to. They've definitely got you know thorough gig guides and, and things that you need to be on top of. Daily papers, entertainment sections there, trade magazines, all very similar to the, to, to the sort of things that you guys have got going on here.